Bud Selig was put into Cooperstown yesterday. And sweet man, nice man. This is not about him as a person. Okay, but it was... And he has been at the forefront of changes to a game that rarely makes them. And as we all know, traditionalists rule the roost in baseball in a way that doesn't happen in other sports. National pastime and so forth. So the fact that we're looking at the standings today and seeing all these teams that are not trading away their players today because they feel they have a shot because of the wild card, that's Bud Selig. The fact that we look at the standings today and we see three divisions in each league, that's Bud Selig. Okay? That will forever be Bud. And normally, a commissioner that heralds that in would have a shot at Cooperstown, if not, get in. But I, I can't get past the steroid era that he presided over and those who defend Bud Selig say he wanted him out and the Players Association would not allow for the proper testing. And so you need a partner to eradicate performance-enhancing drugs, and he didn't have it. So even if we're able to do that, let's place that aside. But looking at the plaque that will stand in Cooperstown or be on the wall in Cooperstown forever, this one really hit me. Of all the things that are, are put on his plaque, the words fostered an unprecedented stretch of labor peace really hit home to me. And fans of baseball who remember 1994, fans of the Yankees, the Expos, the White Sox, the Indians of 1994 in particular, that one really hurt. Fans of baseball, Kids who had to be explained why the season in 1994 stopped and there was no World Series. The commissioner of the sport, the only sport that I can remember, the commissioner of the sport of baseball, in the only time baseball blew off a World Series, has on his plaque that he fostered in an unprecedented era of labor peace. It's like the rest of that sentence is missing. After creating the nuclear fall and winter that created the environment that forced everybody to have to talk to each other because we weren't going to go through that crap again. But that's a run-on sentence. That could fill up an entire plaque. And I, I look, the last All-Star game that I covered for ESPN, because, yes, I did baseball mostly while I was at the Worldwide Leader and covered a, a bunch of World Series and a bunch of All-Star games as the host of ESPN Radio's baseball coverage. Being in that stadium in Milwaukee for the 2002 All-Star game where the roof leaked during the home run derby and everybody lost 20 pounds because the roof was put on top of the stadium as there was a major storm going on and it created with no air conditioning in the building or not enough air conditioning in the building, a total sauna. And then the next night where there was a tie. If we, if, if you had come up to any human being in that building that night and said Alan H. Bud Selig would be in Cooperstown, New York as an enshrined member of the Hall of Fame, you would have been told, what drug are you on? So what happened between 2002 and 2017? Time? I guess. People forgetting less about what happened in 1994 and the asterisks that we're constantly putting next to records. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. If you like that video, be sure to download our app and I'll be sure to move week six games to Saturday for that wedding you have to go to. 